everyone and welcome to this brief video. It's such a glorious day today that I thought I'd sit in the garden and make this for you. And it's to share a few tips on nominating yourself or others for particular awards. Uh, right on this first screen, it's in that you're a winner. And that's one of the um, one of the key points I've learned, especially by nominating other people for awards or um, mentoring people for senior or principal fellowship of the Higher Education Academy. I can see that so many people are winners, but the big problem is hardly anyone talks about it, how great they are. So it's very important that you share this. So whenever you see different award ceremonies coming up, think of nominating yourselves or others. And this is what I want to talk to you about by sharing some of these top tips. Um, first of all, follow the rules and the instructions perfectly. For those of us in higher education, just think about when you're um, doing assignments or marking assignments of others, we want to make sure that people have followed the rules. And this is really important. So you can't just write one nomination for yourself and expect to share it across different platforms. You must go to the specific um, organisers and see exactly what it is that they're looking for and use their words at them. Also, if there are different categories, it may be that you're going to nominate yourself or others across a few different categories. Again, I would say, unless they specifically ask you to use the same form for each, that it may be worth just changing the wording slightly to make sure that you're addressing the specifics of the award category that you're going for. And it's usually helpful to build in their wording so that they can see exactly, look, this is what we were asking for, this is what we require, and look how this person maps across to it. So really important to do that. Um, also, have a plan in how you're writing your narrative, and it may be a really good starting point to think of primacy and recency. What's the the, the, the biggest... Um, amount of evidence you can show them. So if it's a particular type of award you're looking at, what is it that that the award um, um, company, the, 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 the people running the ceremonies, what is it that they're looking for? So show how you've got this in, in abundance and especially that you've got it now. So look at the primacy of this and also the recency. It may be possible then that you can trace back as well. When you're telling your story, you might be saying, well, actually, this is where I am today, but look what's got me there. So it may be good to look back on how you've got there. And especially if you had certain um, barriers that you had to overcome. So some awards, for example, like people to face um, um, to show how they face challenges. So were there difficulties in, in you implementing something or getting to where you are now? And in which case, what strong strategies have you got for overcoming some of these hurdles? And that's what you, you can be sharing then as a role model for others to emulate. Also really good to use some of their wording back at them and especially making sure that you highlight their key requirements. So they don't just want you to go off on a tangent to say how good you are at something. And look how many people find it difficult to talk about how good they are at something. It's quite often not in many people's nature to be able to do that. But for goodness sake, you are doing such wonderful things and it's, it's, it's amazing for you to be held up as role models for others. Okay, so give solid evidence as well, and especially by reflecting their wording back to them. That's important. If um, an award ceremony allows you to submit to more than one category, then think of doing that. It may be that you're a new person on the block, you know, um, a rising star might be that one. You might also have specific um issues or particular areas. So it may be that they want something in a field of practice. So you may be nominating yourself for a rising star in a field of practice or in general. So keep looking at the different categories, because again, if you nominate yourself across more than one, then however many you put yourself in for, you've got that many chances of being shortlisted. So I'd suggest that maybe don't put in the same form across different categories, especially if they're asking for differences. So say, for example, with some award ceremonies, there may be something like a Mary Seacole Award. 
So obviously, that's key in focusing on specific issues around ethnicities. So you can't use a generic form. So you might have been a rising star in one category, but how does that map across then to the requirements for a Mary Seacole Award or a Diversity and Inclusion Award? So look at the wording that they're, they're actually asking for and make sure you map across that. Also, it's wonderful if other people nominate you as well, or maybe you're not nominating others. So again, the more nominations that go in, the greater chance there is of somebody being shortlisted for this. So it could be that um, you ask others to nominate you or drop some hints, if you don't like to ask outright, that others nominate you for these awards. Always make sure you proofread your work, just as with assignments. Make sure that you're mapping across to exactly what they want. And if you've got little snippets of evidence you can give, maybe somebody's written you a lovely email saying how wonderful you are or you've helped them in particular ways or um, stood with them during tough times. So any kind words you've received from others, you may be able to use those as evidence as well. And also, um, I know we're also short of time and it's difficult even to find time to nominate yourselves. But if you've got time to nominate other people, that's fantastic. Um, I know from my own point of view, I've managed to nominate three honorary doctors, two visiting professors, um, two fellows of the Royal College of Nursing and some lo local and national awards for other people as well. And it's a wonderful experience to think, I've had part to play in their journey. Okay, so when you see other people as inspirations, think of nominating them as well. What goes around comes around there. And coming towards the end now, uh, don't be put off. If at first you don't succeed and maybe you don't get shortlisted or you do get shortlisted and get as far as a finalist, but maybe not the actual award winner, even being a finalist is fantastic. Make sure you put that on your CV and be proud of that and celebrate it with others. But don't let any rejection put you off. Take on board what the organisers are telling you for why you didn't get through on this occasion and build that into the change that you need to make sure you do it in future. If you are um, on particular pathways, say for example with students who may be on the advanced clinical um, practice master's degree, then it may be appropriate as well for you to weave in how you tick in the boxes of um, the, 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 the four pillars of advanced clinical practice. And it's not just a case of ticking boxes. Um, what I mean by that is demonstrate how you're actually achieving all of that. Or you may be an apprentice route learner as well. So show how um, knowledge, attitudes, skills are really important to you and how they've brought you to the point where you are today so much so that you're putting in this nomination for yourselves and be aware that you can do it and it's up to you all right good luck and best wishes and feel free to to talk to others about um, helping you with this maybe proofreading for you or nominating you as well good luck and best wishes to every one of you